Ad Fellowship began in England more or less 280 years ago. Our branch, the Independent Order of Ad Fellows, will celebrate its 200 year anniversary this 2019. Yet, the latest journal history and guide about Ad Fellowship was published in the year 1900 or about 100 years ago. And this thick book consists of about 900 pages. And it does not cover year 1900 to the present. So basically, a lot of the traditions, history, and contributions of a worldwide fraternal order are inside volumes of private journals consisting of over 50,000 pages that are not easily accessible to our members and the general public. In 1994, Deputy Sovereign Grandmaster Wayne Reynolds emphasized that the IOF in North America cannot get the membership to sell ad fellowship to a sufficient number of new members until the members themselves are schooled into what the ad fellows is all about, what its goals and principles are, and have more than a little knowledge about its history. In 2008, we began to add a lot of information and history about ad fellowship on the internet by creating educational videos and uploaded it through YouTube. We created Facebook pages, group forums, and so on. But the internet can be so unreliable and any information placed there can be deleted anytime. So in 2012, I began summarizing hundreds of journals and books about ad fellowship, fraternal orders, friendly societies and trade yields to come up with a summarized and up-to-date history and guide or manual about Ad Fellowship as an organization for our members and the general public. The first chapter talks about principles and purposes of Ad Fellowship as an organization and as a way of life. This is followed by a chapter that tries to explain the name Ad Fellow, then a chapter about the legends and origins of Ad Fellowship, which basically basically talks about the mythical and factual history of the origins of Ad Fellowship. And this is followed by uh, a chapter that talks about early English clubs and their practices, which are very similar to the early Ad Lodges. And there's a chapter about the Industrial Revolution, which really helped grow the number of English clubs and friendly societies in England. And there's religious intolerance and government suppression, which is one of the reasons why a lot of our records were destroyed. And there's revival after the suppression, and there's the rise of the Manchester unity. This is followed by a chapter about the successful establishment of Ad Fellowship in North America, followed by the effects of Gold Rush in terms of membership growth of Ad Fellowship. Then there's a chapter about the American Civil War, its effects, and the role of Ad Fellowship towards uh, their brothers during the war, and the golden age of fraternalism wherein the Ad Fellows was the largest fraternal organization in the world. And this was followed by World War II, then the Great Depression, which really affected the membership of all fraternal orders in North America and even in the world. Then World War II, wherein uh, the Ad Fellows contributed a lot to help uh, fight for peace and democracy. And then there's civil rights and racial integration, and then the decline of fraternalism, signs of rebirth, which, is, which really talks about uh, revival in today's time. And there's international spread, which talks about uh, summarized history of the founding dates of Ad Fellowship in various countries around the world. And there's organizational structure which, stru which tries to explain uh, the functions of the officers from local, national to international level. And I still have around five chapters to finish. And all I can hope is that you will support this project until completion and buy a copy once published. The main goal is really to educate our membership and the general public so that they will learn and appreciate our history, understand our principles and purposes, our traditions, and appreciate the great contributions our organization has done to the betterment of the world at large for more than 200 years.